Good evening. Welcome to the evening prayer service from the Trinity Episcopal Church in Towson. The service we are using is the dailyoffice.wordpress.com. Uh, yes, dot com. And I'm Mother Liz Masterson. With me, uh, assisting me this evening is uh, Father Charles Cloen. I'm so glad uh, you all can join us. I see Joni has joined. And I hope a couple of others will join soon too. I bet Ted is with you. Good to, good to have you with us this evening. I'm going to wait a couple of minutes, not a couple of minutes, just a little bit to see if anyone else is coming on board at the beginning. Nancy, hi. Okay, I think we have enough to get started. Let's begin with our evening prayer service. It is interesting that the first uh, picture on tonight's liturgy is of the initial jobless claims to show how badly things are in terms of people not having jobs. So it makes it more all the more important to determine uh, how to um, how to pray and I hope tonight's prayer service helps Jesus said to them go into the, all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ O God make speed to save us O Lord make haste to help us Glory, Glory to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us say together, Light of the world, Light of the, of the world, world in grace and beauty, mirror, mirror of, of God's, God's eternal face, transparent, transparent flame of love's free duty, you bring salvation to our race. Now, as we see the lights of evening, we raise our voice in hymns of praise. Worthy are you of endless blessing, son of our night, lamp of our days. <coughs> Jack Weber and Judy, good to have you here tonight. Our two Psalms today for this evening are Psalm 111 and 114. We will read them responsively by whole verse. Alleluia, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. Full of majesty and splendor is the work of the Lord, whose righteousness endures forever. Gracious and full of compassion is the Lord, whose marvelous works are to be remembered. The Lord gives food to the God-fearing, ever mindful of the covenant. The Lord has shown the chosen people the works of power and giving them the lands of the nations. The hands of the Lord work faithfulness and justice. All the commandments of the Lord are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. The Lord sent redemption to the chosen people, commanding the covenant forever. Holy and awesome is the name of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. The praise of the Lord endures forever. Alleluia. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, from a people of strange speech. Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel's God's dominion. The sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. 
The mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and flintstone into a flowing spring. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and, and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Our reading tonight is from the 16th chapter of the Gospel of Mark, beginning at the ninth verse. Now, after Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard Jesus was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table. And he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I told you yesterday that um, I would be talking a little bit about uh, the fact that we have part of the gospel, the very end part of the gospel of Mark that... Um, scholars say was a later edition. It was not that much later. Evidently, it was known by the second century. And you wonder why Mark, if, if indeed Mark didn't um, have this an ending that was lost, why did he stop where he did and why people thought more needed to be added? Well, of course, it's very hard to understand why he would stop having the women run in fear from the tomb. And it's sort of easy to understand why uh, more of the post-resurrection story would be included, would be added on. I think it's interesting as we look at this, that um, hearing from reports, reporters from Mary Magdalene from two other disciples Simply hearing about it did not seem to be enough in this later ending of the, of the scripture. And Jesus finally showed up himself and called them um, unfaithful, not having enough belief and being stubborn. I guess Christians all the, throughout all the ages have sometimes manifested these characteristics. But Jesus seems to love us anyway. One of the things that we do know is that in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, in the 15th chapter, verses 3 and 4, there is an early creedal statement that indicated there were post-resurrection appearances. In those verses, Christ died for our sins, 
was buried, rose on the third day, appeared to Cephas, and then to the 12, sort of summarizing it there. So post-resurrection should have been part of Mark's understanding of, of what, what happened, but evidently he either didn't feel necessary to include it or, or excuse me, or he did include it and it got lost. However, what we read tonight, I don't think are any of your favorite post-resurrection pa passages, not for me anyway. You know, there's no Thomas touching the wounds. There's no broiled fish on the beach. There are no amazed men on the road to Emmaus um, after they broke bread with Jesus. All the wonderful post-resurrection stories are, are not here. This is very, very, um, brief and 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 kind of um, have has some stuff that for modern ears is rather weird. So as I thought about it, what I uh, came to was this thought: what is necessary and what is sufficient for faith. Verbal explanation and an awareness of past revelatory moments, even other people's theology statements, um, the transfiguration experience that maybe was reported or maybe was not reported until after Jesus um, uh, ascended to heaven. Um, all these are necessary, but perhaps not sufficient. I think what may be sufficient is a more personal experience. And of course, Jesus isn't with us. We can't get roast fish with him on the beach. Uh, we can't touch his wounds. So what are the signs now? I'm not really fond of the ones that are listed here, uh, particularly the snakes and the drinking deadly things. Uh, speaking in new tongues is something that parts of the church feel are important. Um, and certainly laying on of hands and recovering um, and healing are important, particularly as we struggle with this time of virus. But signs that we can see personally, I think, are are really two, mercy, when we are given mercy that we don't deserve, and when we are given comfort by a stranger or someone that we would never expect to receive it from. I think those are signs of God's grace active in the world, signs that Jesus is who Jesus said he was and is. So I leave it with you now as we, as we struggle with our uh, isolation from others, uh, having to communicate by, by video and Zoom and uh, phone chats with, uh, with or without video. Think about times when you receive mercy that was undeserved, or you received comfort from an unexpected quarter from a person that you didn't realize would give you comfort. Um, I know in the past couple of weeks, these experiences have happened to me, and I hope they have happened to you as well. Amen. Amen. Let us continue with the song of Simeon, saying it together. Lord, you have now, now have set, set your servant, servant free to go in, in peace as you have, have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now let us say together the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, together, we'll pray our Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, grant that we, who have been raised with him, may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to pray together uh, a prayer in the time of pandemic. I'll read the biddings and if afterwards, it's not on your script, but afterwards, if you would, after each bidding, if you would say, hear our prayer. This hour we turn to you, O Lord, in full knowledge of our frailty, our vulnerability, and our great need as your mortal creatures. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We cry to you as one human family, unsure of the path ahead, unequal to the unseen forces around us, frightened by the sickness and death that seem all too real to us now. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. Stir up your strength and visit us, O Lord. Be our shield and rock and hiding place. Hear, Hear our prayer. prayer. Guide our leaders, our scientists, our nurses and doctors. Give them wisdom and fill their hearts with courage and determination. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Make even this hour, O Lord, a season of blessing for us, that in fear we find you mighty to save, and in illness or death we find the cross to be none other than the way of life. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. All this we ask in the name of the one who bore all our infirmities, Jesus Christ, our risen and victorious Lord. Amen. Amen. Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Tonight we pray in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the diocese, of Ifo, Nigeria, and the Diocese of Mississippi and Western Massachusetts in the United States. We pray this evening for the departed, for the 120,000 dead worldwide from COVID-19, for Terry Hunt, for the Reverend Debbie Graham, Nancy Kirk, Jane Vickers, Ted Paget, and also from the Trinity community, Thomas Coleman. We pray for those who mourn, for Teresa, 
for our webcasters. And now I'm going to share the Trinity prayer list. We pray for those who are at particular risk for, exp for exp exposure to the COVID-19 virus and are awaiting tests or have a diagnosis. Mike, Kelly, Lori, Carol, Tom and Claire, Leo, Lisa, Penelope, Ariadne, Jaden, Chris and Mimi, Brenda, Brenda Richardson and her staff, Margaret, Damon, Amelia, and Avery, Mario and Francisco, Aaron, Jay, and Mary. We pray for those who are struggling with the larger impact of the COVID-19 outbreak, essential workers, everyone in medical contexts, first responders, gig workers, self-employed, business, small business owners, struggling parents, the unemployed, the uninsured, and those without paid sick leave. We also pray tonight for those who are homebound, either long-term or due to retirement community quarantine. Hugh and Dolores, Phoebe, Pat, Sally, June, Betty, Ann and Ken, Marina, Jack, Dottie, Dick and Linda, Pont, Ed and Stella, Betsy, Dick and Jenny, Dixie, Sandy, Ruth, Nancy, Jim and Phyllis, and Pat. We pray for those who are in need of prayer for non-COVID-19 reasons. Joanne, Clementine, Debbie, Jessica, Carl, Cass, Rick, David, Megan, John, Corey, Jill, Marjorie and Richard, Jack, Krista, Chip, Alexandra, James, Catherine, Aunt Honey, Christine, Linda, Nancy, Chris, Deacon Bob and Mary Beth, Sandy, Harry, Andrea, Donna, Mary Gillette, David, James, Mary Dell. Please add your own prayers at this time. And we give thanks for the birthday of Pat Shaw. I uh, offered her birthday wishes yesterday, but if uh, Facebook is correct, today is her birthday, not yesterday. Let us say together the prayer for mission. O oh God, God, you manifest, manifest in your in servants, servants the signs, signs of your, your presence. presence. Send, Send forth, forth upon us the spirit, spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, another your, your abounding, abounding grace may increase among us, us through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Alle be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the sun of righteousness shine on us and scatter the darkness for, from before our path. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us this day and remain with us always. Thank you all so Amen. much. Amen, right. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being part of our evening worship. I wish you all a peaceful night, and I hope that you will experience both mercy and, and grace and love from the people who share your life. Thanks be to God. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.